recording in progress <laughs> we hello <know> <laughs> everyone i am here with vivian casimir vivian if i'm something not saying correctly feel free to stop me we're all human <laughs> beings here no it's perfect no worries yeah no worries. Today... thank you for inviting me thank you i really really appreciate it yeah absolutely thank you vivian yes i remember when we had this conversation that sparkled me to invite you and have a longer or maybe shorter dialogue but still about the subject and we're going to talk about zen way of life i'm really excited to hear what you have to say for us so let me go ahead and introduce you more properly vivian casimir phd hoo -hoo. you're the founder of muoku technique miyoku mm -hmm. miyoku okay mm -hmm. almost got no it a Zen way of life for mind, body, and spirit. I am actually, I know I mentioned to you, I will ask you, what is Zen? I'm curious, what is Miyoko technique? Ah, Miyoko <laughs> technique is based on is based on Zen, but Zen can be harsh for people who are not really into transformation of the mind. So I make it softer, meaning more accessible. So Miyoko, it's a way to okay, let me, let me remind you, what is Zen? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. Very good. Zen, it's, it means in Japanese, uh, meditation ah. already. So when we say Zen meditation, it's like a pleonasm. You know, we repeat the same thing, but it's okay. Um, Zen is actually a way of uh, interacting with yourself, with nature, with the world, through the eyes of your true self. So how do you practice that thing? How do you see the world through the eyes of your true self? And this is why we do Zazen. Zazen means sitting meditation. You see what I mean? And there's also Do Zen. Do, it means in motion. So there is Zazen, sitting meditation, and Dozen in movement, in motion. Oh. So you can walk, like walking meditation, or you can do like movement of Tai Chi or Qigong, you know. So yeah, so Zen means, first of all, how you interact with yourself. Who are you, Nadia? I don't want a name. Mm -hmm. I want an answer from your true nature. We all have Buddha nature. Yeah. So Zen is a way to reconnect with that nature and see the world through that true identity. Wow. Okay. So and Miyoko technique is now, as we understand what Zen is, and what is Miyoko technique? You said it's a more gentle, it's more... Yeah. So what I, I do, I help people uh, to be realigned, mind-body, with breathing techniques when we sit meditation we don't just meditate in a zen way because it's not comfortable for everybody you know people don't want particularly mm -hmm. so i use breathing techniques so the 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 result is the same but i use breathing technique to help them center themselves mm -hmm. so you focus on your breathing technique and i do also moving meditation and it's with movement of martial art uh, stances to develop the grounding so the body and the mind are one. Oh. And that's interesting, if I may say. Uh, you know, I, I am in my 60s now, early 60s. So in the in my 20s, in the 80s, 90s, mind-body, the concept mind-body was very much in fashion. You know, with Caroline Miss, the anatomy of the spirit, and all those new people talking about how emotion affect the body and da-da-da. Yeah, it was a new way of talking. But... but after 2000, something happened, and we talked about mind-body in a more advanced way, meaning it's not just your emotion affect your body, like disease, because before it was about health issue. Mind-body was about well-being, health. So you do yoga, you do this to be fine, to be in, the, in alignment. But now, mind-body has shifted a bit, and it's more about transformation. It's about taking your true self to a, to a more vibrating level is to transform yourself. So in other words, I use the, the expression Zen mind body to show people that I want to help them reach their true nature. Well, like mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All is one. We know matter is energy. 
It's easy. We all know things intellectually. But know, now, what does it mean? And that's what I like about Zen. It is, we say that sitting meditation, don't expect things to come. You're not going to become enlightened. You know, on the contrary, you don't gain anything. When you meditate, the true spiritual meditation, what is it for? Is to come out of duality. Because the human brain sees opposition everywhere. It's normal. This is the brain, okay? There's a day, night, men, women, a good, bad, absence, presence. Mm. If you look up any word in a dictionary, it will be defined by its opposite. Yeah. So our mind is dual. So when you do a spiritual meditation practice, is to come out of the illusion. Mm. Uh, of, yeah, the illusion, but the duality mm. is to become truly in oneness. Wow. So you see the world as one. There's no opposition. Everything makes sense. There's no opposition. In, yeah. in a, yes. So we say when you seek meditation, you don't gain anything. You lose everything. Mm. You lose all illusions about yourself. There's no I anymore. There's no you. So I'm curious. Um, for the people who practice Zen meditation, I'll put it this way. I practice meditation twice a day. And I like that you mentioned it's also through, through movement. I'm very curious to hear more about that. And I know it's all good for, but when we bring this as, um, you know, the, the word that comes to me is an urgency. Like, I'm not going to, I'll do it later or I'll do it twice a week. When I practice daily, do you have an example of what might be, um, how does life, you said the word transform, how does someone's life transform? Maybe very have good a, question. a past example. I love it. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Yeah. For example, there's a lot of quotes in Zen, and I'm going to give you a little Zen story. It's a monk that goes to the temple every day, and then he walks back home. And, and one day, he sees a huge flower in his garden. And he says to his flower, thank you, thank you so much, you're so beautiful. But the flower has always been there. He never saw it. So once you change consciousness, mm -hmm. then you see differently the world. Mm -hmm. So that's what Zen does to you. It transforms. It helps you pierce, literally pierce the ordinary. And ordinary, mm -hmm. the, the etymology of the word, it doesn't mean boring or... You know, nowadays we say, oh, uh, it's too ordinary, like it's too simple. No, ordinary means the order of things. Ooh. That's what it means. Okay. So when you pierce the ordinary, like the morning, you have your tea or coffee, you get yourself ready for work. And blah, blah, blah. When you pierce this ordinary, the order of things of life, then you let the extraordinary comes out of you. It springs out. Because you understand the mm. water I'm drinking is not just water, it's life. Wow. So, so the ordinary you're... becomes extraordinary. As I'm sitting in front of the of the window, looking at the sun, you know, I'm, I just watch the sun splashing on the wall of the building and the bird passes by. That's it. That's my now. That's extraordinary. You know, I, I become it. one with the bird. Mm -hmm. You know? So, you know, so, that's interesting. Um, when we, like in my practice, one of the biggest challenges, number one, the top one, there is no time. Where do I put my workouts? Where do I put, you know, preparing my meal and all that? You know, the things that we have to do every day. What I hear from you, when we bring an order of this ordinary things in our daily life, only then the extraordinary shows yeah. up. Take time. As you said, there's no time. There's only one time. Let's say time. We call the now. Because the now is not past, present, future. The now in Zen is a state of mind. In that now, I breathe in, it's the now. I breathe out, it's the now. So if I stay connected to my breath all the time, I really connect mind, body, and I am in the now. So in the now, you can do very simple things at home. I can sweep the floor. I can do the dishes. But if I do the dishes 
with my full consciousness of I am breathing in, I am breathing out. Mm -hmm. The water on my plate that I'm washing is one with me. So you see, the ordinary yeah. opens up, boom, it's like a window. Choof, and I love my life. It's very simple, but I connect with everything differently now. You know? Yeah, time. it's like the things that you always had, like the flower you mentioned, it's always been there, and all of a sudden you see the flower, and more you see the colors, yeah. the shades. The yeah, texture, exactly. the size, all of a sudden, you know that, oh, wow, you're washing the floors and the broom is green. I've never noticed that it was green. Ex exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, the sudden you notice, oh, wow, the border actually has those interesting streaks on my floor because the floor has so much. You exactly. notice the more details of the ordinary life that brings up the extraordinary experience. Exactly. Ooh, I like what I said. <laughs> <laughs> this is it this is you know we say in zen stop wanting to hear the universe you know like for example i'm meditating here at my station and i hear the dog bark and i'm like oh the dog is breaking my silence of meditation no it's not about the silence around you it's about the inner silence okay so in that sense we say when you reach the inner silence then even the chant of the cricket at my feet, I will hear the sound of the universe. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you are really connected to your, to your breath, to your, to, your, to your true self, this is it. The universe opens up. You don't need to pray, to pray every day, to do a mantra. Blah, blah, blah. It's right here, right now. You have it. We all have it. I know it's easy to say. I'm still practicing then with my master. I have a, an assigned master. So yeah, I, I mean, it's easy to say. So, But it's important that people hear it over and over again in different ways. Someone else can explain to you Zen in a different way, but it will be the same intention to show you that you have it. Don't look for it outside. You have it. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. And I you hear know? from you, it's really a daily so. practice. I totally agree. Like I mm -hmm. practice the mindfulness and being present, actually just intentionally noticing the details, what I'm eating, what I'm sitting on, the water I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you so mm -hmm. much for this. Um, daily things that we don't even think about, but they're right there available for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, there's another tip. There's another tip because I remember once you asked me th this, it's ask yourself when you are angry or sad or whatever the emotion, ask yourself. For me, I have a tendency to be frustrated with things. And I'm like, who is frustrated with that? It's not my true self. It's my ego. Huh. So that helps you detach from what is annoying supposedly in your life. You know, who is angry at the situation because, I don't know, the the Zoom didn't work like me yesterday. My <laughs> Zoom did not work. Who is angry at the at Zoom? It's not my true self. My true self is in peacefulness all the time. It's my ego. So then when you learn to detach from your ego, then you slowly go out of duality. Because the point of Zen is to show you how to get out. It's like the movie, The Matrix. It's to get out of the duality. You know? Yeah. We are always looking for things that don't work. But what about things that work? But also... There's nothing works, nothing don't doesn't work. Mm -hmm. They are things. Life is life. It's not good, it's not bad. Life is life. Then you put a value to it, but there's no value in the universe. Life is life. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we can talk about that, I think, for hours. It's uh but it is really, really important conversation. Yeah, because we are so stressed and overwhelmed nowadays, but really bring in that quietness, that Zen way of life into our daily mm -hmm. way of being and finding our true selves and seeing the world through our own eyes. So exactly. thank you so much for reminding us. So Vivian, I'm going to put your contact information under the video so everybody can find you if they have more questions and want to join okay. your programs. Any final words before we go? Yes, people, the planet, <laughs> humanity, it needs you, needs you all to evolve. That's what we call conscious evolution now. Mm -hmm. We all need to evolve to come out of these things. We are all one and it's not intellectual. 
we are all one. So work on yourself. Yes. I'm Come out. Yeah, Come out. Yeah. Thanks, Vivian. <laughs> Oof. Okay, I really appreciate you, Vivian. Oh, okay, you. I'm going to pause this video so where I can. And thank you so much for your words of wisdom. I thank you, Nadia. It's always a pleasure. All right, everyone. See you around. Bye-bye for now. Bye.